Welcome to the Real Pros of DC. Each week we interview some of the DC metro area's top professionals and discuss topics related to this unique real estate market. I'm your host, William McCoy, and this is the Real Pros of DC. Welcome to the Real Pros of DC, where each week we interview some of the DC metro area's top real estate professionals. I'm your host, William McCoy, and I have on the show today co-host Paul, Amanda, Alicia, and we have Philip Elliott from uh, Columbia Appraisal. Philip, uh, nice to have you on the show today. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Good, good. So tell us how you got into the, uh, the appraisal business about your company. My name is Philip Elliott. I'm with Columbia Realty Advisors. We're based out of College Park, Maryland. We do residential and commercial appraisal, and we've been in business over 15 years. I... Uh, Went to the University of Maryland for architecture. Okay. And I you graduated may. and kept going to George Washington University for MBA in real estate development. And then I proceeded into real estate appraisal from that point on. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. And so for the average consumer, why is an appraisal important? I think it's an, one element, a uh, very important element in making good financial decisions where your real estate assets are concerned whether it's buying or selling or whether it's valuing an investment partnership or whether it's the basis for taxation or some other transaction, it's important to have a good understanding of what the value of your property is. What is the process for becoming an appraiser? There's three steps. There's a, education is a, is a part of it, experience, and then passing the exam. There's actually three levels of licensure. There's a, a licensed appraiser, which is kind of the minimum threshold. Then there's a certified residential appraiser, which is sort of the median threshold, the middle level. Then there's a certified general appraiser license. And so the education requirements, experience requirement, and the difficulty exam varies according to the uh, license. That Does you... that determine what kind of appraisals you can do? Yes, yes. The minimum appraisal, the, the threshold changes, but it used to be about single family homes and properties up to $250,000 for the minimum. And the certified general is any type of property. So there's some variation. The uh, middle level licensure is usually up to a million dollars and uh, commercial, light commercial and residential as well. So. Who usually um, requests an appraiser? Who typically requests an appraiser? It could vary. I think for the average person's experience, most of the time it's involved with a bank-related transaction, say a home purchase that's getting financing or refinancing of an okay. existing on home, but also banks, mm -hmm. accountants, yeah. lawyers, insurance companies, and private individuals looking to, to value their own assets or have some kind of understanding of what their property is worth. So anytime you bring up money, there's a lot of pressure, right? Yes. Um, especially on people's homes or, or yes. any type of property, it's, it's an emotional attachment. Yes. What are some of the pressures that you're under, Philip, when it comes to appraisal? I think as an appraiser, one of the most significant uh, pressures is time. Everybody seems to be in a rush to get their appraisal, to get some kind of opinion from it. And I think time is important because it's a judgment. And the more time you have, the more, cons the, the more uh, thorough you can do because appraisal is sort of like an investigation. Mm -hmm. And you're investigating market trends, you're investigating market characteristics of a property, and the more time you have, the better off you are. But unfortunately, as we all know, you don't have as much time as you like. Are there particular trends or upgrades that really increase the value of the home? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, there's a trend now to go green, mm -hmm. and that's, that's affecting values. I think it takes a little time sometimes. It takes you have to have a, a certain amount of market evidence b b before you can say this affects the value in a certain way. So it takes a little time. There has to be this uh, critical mass of activity around green properties, but we are seeing and we are developing studies and uh, finding out the, the specific effect. That's very interesting. What's an example of green? Well, what? oh, say for instance, somebody has uh, solar panels on the house. Okay, okay. Or some, somebody has recyclable ma materials on the house or something like that. Or the, start seeing that trend. Oh, it started 2000, 2005. Okay. But, it, but it's gotten stronger now, and I think certain regions uh, have been involved more in, you know, green construction than others. And the uh, federal government has also played a role in the 
commercial side with a, what's called lead standards for so it's, it's it's becoming more market accepted and you know we're gaining more knowledge now on how to value that but also there are public policy issues which affect uh, value of real estate say for instance some of the out outlying counties in the state of Maryland maybe well and septic requirements and you know change over time for environmental reasons mm -hmm. and that has affected the cost of a home as well as the value of the home Besides green features, uh -huh. what other features impact the price of a home, or the value of a home? You know, that's, that's an interesting question, and we usually try to do something like a parent sales analysis to, to quantify that exactly. But uh, specifically, for the exterior of a home, usually roofing and your exterior cladding, like new siding or maybe stone or brick accents help a lot. On the interior, it seems like kitchen and baths get the most money, uh, you know, add the most value. And the, there, there is a website called uh, Cost Versus Value, and it's sponsored by Remodeling Magazine. Okay. And, and they do studies. And it, it actually, if you look at their site, it actually varies by region what wow. adds and I what I have seen that report, yeah. Okay. But that's, that's one source that we sort of refer to. Oh, I didn't know that the appraisers process. referred to it. Yeah, it's, it's a... Everything helps. Everything helps. I will tell you, sellers always think what they put in their basement yeah. is going to add so much value. Oh, I've got a bedroom yeah. down there. I've got a yeah. bathroom yeah. down there. But yeah. when you actually see the values, it, the basement improvements don't yeah. really impact the price as much as the seller yeah. always thinks it does. I, th I think there's a lot of e emotion in residential real estate. Right. And sometimes when you look at we your own property, yeah. <laughs> you know, you see it, right? And what I I had a car when I was in college. It was about 25 years old, and somebody hit it and totaled it. And the insurance company gave me 250 dollars for it. Well, <laughs> it was worth a million dollars to me because right. it was all I had. Right. 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 Yeah. And some some days our our attachment can affect our opinion. But an appraiser is supposed to be an objective, unbiased opinion uh, giver. What advice do you give a seller regarding appraisals in the process? Mm, I would say when I go into a house, but you know, I'm going to uh, address this mostly to a home buyer. Uh, when, when I go into a house, I always tell the, the owner to tell me the story. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, what have they done to maintain the house? Or, or what, you know, what works, what doesn't work? Or what do they think is special about it? I'll, I'll hear, you know, there's nothing wrong with hearing what uh -huh. a person's feeling. And, and sometimes, a, a lot of times, you find that a homeowner has uh, some good insights about their neighborhood, about their property. If they've bought it recently, you know, if, if it's been constructed recently, I may ask if they've had, like, build upgrades or what kind of special features and things like that. So we all know that a lot of times when it comes to pricing, again, it's, in a, it's somebody, especially considering a home, it can be an emotional thing. And from time to time, there can be a dispute when it comes to appraisal price, yeah. how does that process go uh, when it comes to a dispute with the price, mm -hmm. and what is the uh, rebuttal process for that? I think it depends. Again, I'll start with the uh, process where it's involving a bank. Cause right. A lot of times it's a purchase, or right. for a purchase or refinance. Yep. In that case, if you have information that's contrary to what you think is in the appraisal, you can submit that to the bank's underwriting department. You can say, I wish you would take a look at this. Or if you have a, an appraisal that, that, that you have from recently that some different appraisal has done, you can submit that and say, I would like you to review this appraisal and compare it. And then you can always ask for a second opinion as well. Very cool. Okay. It's good to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Earlier you had mentioned um, like a commercial appraisal. What's the yeah. biggest challenge between a commercial appraisal versus like a residential appraisal? I think in my opinion and my experience, even – Commercial and residential, the biggest uh, factor or the thing I struggle with is good data. You have to have good data to make a decision. I, I mentioned investigation. Right? So finding good data is important and then verifying that information. Just because you have a sale, you have to understand why this person purchased it or what the terms of the sale. Mm -hmm. So if they were under du duress or something like or if they sold at a discount or if they wanted some kind of pressure to get rid of them, they just not, you know, you have to understand all those details about it. Mm -hmm. And so finding good information and verifying your information is the most difficult. 
Well, thank you so much, Philip, for, for coming on the show. This has been a, a wealth of knowledge to us. I know a lot of people always ask about appraisal, so it was great to have somebody with your knowledge and background in it. Tell our audience how to get in contact with you if they want more information from you. Our website is ColumbiaRealtyAdvisors.com. Our phone number is 301-441-2281. And our email address is box9601 at Outlook.com. Well, thank you so much, Philip. This has been great. Uh, thank you for joining us on The Real Pros of D.C. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Real Pros of D.C. Have a real estate topic you would like us to discuss? Go to www.therealprosofdc.com and submit your idea and see footage of the show. See you next time.